individuals and activists have been in the street for months, protesting against the regime of General Prayut chan cha and the old elites altogether. The young people demand freedom and true democracy. This event is initiated by Stiftung Asien House in cooperation with Association of Thai Democrats Without Borders, Thailand Human Rights Campaign UK and the Department of Southeast Asian Studies at Bonn University. It is also supported by Students Body Initiative of the Institute for Asian and African Studies at Humboldt University in Berlin and the student represent representatives of Thai studies in Hamburg. So welcome to, to our interpreters, Sun Yata Mian Lamai and Thanakon Tirawong, as well as to Pachi Pabutha, who will monitor incoming questions and comments on Google Docs and Facebook, since we will have a Q&A session as well. So happy to have you with us today. Again, a very warm welcome to our brave young guests from Thailand, and the discussion will be chaired by Prapakon Wong Ratanawin. She's also a member of the Thailand Working Group at ASEAN House. So Prapakon, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shen. Um, Thank you so much. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. Um, titled Solidarity with Thailand's Quest for Democracy When Thailand's Youth is in Revolt for Freedom and Democracy. I am Prabhakon Wong Ratanawin from Asia House Foundation. Um, as you may have known that recently in Thailand, the younger generation is making a remarkable political move. Um, since a large gathering by a group that calls itself Free Youth Movement and the Student Union of Thailand on July 18. Um, they have proposed three demands, stop threatening people, dissolve the parliament and draft a new constitution. After that, we have been seeing other flash mobs inspired by this gathering happening in all regions of the country, in universities, schools, almost every day. And after that, we have seen the 10 demands about um, reforming the monarchy the monarchy. And after that, we also see the, the free people movement, which is formed after the free youth movement. Um, there is another group of rebellious students called the bad student. Um, they organize flash mobs calling out to teachers and schools to stop harassing them. We have seen um, a labor network, the free women group, advocacy groups for gender equality and other networks joining the youth. And we have seen other issues being raised like legal abortion and welfare state. And two days ago, the parliament postponed the voting for um, the amendment of the constitution. And then just after just after one night, we have seen on Twitter, hashtag Republican. We demand a republic, a redeemed change. So that just happens overnight. And this is a movement that the world, that gains interest from the world. And so today we have guests from these movements from who are leaders in this movement and they accept our invitation with no hesitation. So thank you so much. Um, so the first speaker is Ms. Tanapon Prompat or Kim, a 12th grader from Bahasarakam University Demonstration School. The second is Ms. Pakjira Songsiripat or Liu from the Free Youth Movement. Um, Mr. Tanawit Sepsuk or Nick from Bahasarakam Democracy Front. Mr. Tanaton Witea Benjang or Hong Te, Vice Chairman of the Wila Party from Chiang Mai University. Mr. Anon Nampa, Human Rights Attorney and Activist. And lastly, Ms. Jutatip Sirikan or Ua, President of Thailand Student Union from Thammasat University. Um, in our webinar, we have two rounds. In the first round, each speaker will have to answer um, the question provided specifically for them, having five or eight minutes to answer. But if other guests want to join or add, they can speak after the main respondent has finished. And in the second round, there will be um, two questions, each for three of um, the guests. 
and of course, five to eight minutes for each speaker. And I would like to clarify um, about the rules for attendees and audience on Facebook. Please um, um, refrain from posting any comment that discriminates against race, religion, age, appearance, physique, or using vulgar words. Um, those who post such comments will be reported as spam. The comments will be immediately um, deleted. So the first round. Please begin with Kim, followed by um, Pak Jira and Tanaton, Tanawit, Juratip, and Anon. Okay, so Kim, um, you are a student. Um, please tell us why you decided to come out and take political action. Um, what activities have you been doing so far? And what are overall strengths and weaknesses of the student movement in your opinion? Um, talking about talking about political movement in Thailand right now, you will see the movement of youth or children or high schoolers like me. It comes as a surprise for many people because um, in our society, in the Thai society, we have always been hearing um, a narrative, a discourse that says politics is not for kids. But as the world keeps spinning and spinning faster and faster, technology has played an important role in our daily life. It's, inevitable. Um, social media has greatly influenced um, political ideas of the young generation. Social media, first of all, it gives us access to knowledge and information very easily, very conveniently. And secondly, it fosters a culture of expressing idea of, of expression because in Thailand we have never been taught or we have never been encouraged to speak out not even at schools we've never been taught about that the Thai education system never encourages or fosters this kind of idea um, and that thing coupled with um, the technological advance, the online platform. So this coincidence um, makes us see that politics is all around us. Politics is about everybody. And we have fun um, learning about politics. We have fun getting involved in political process. And we have fun learning different opinions and as we realize that politics is all about us and it's fun, it's interesting, we then we, of course, it's, it's fun to, to learn more. It's fun to pass on what we know. And of course, as we gain knowledge and as we grow up and our critical skill is improved and we can make connection, then we start to realize that a coup d'etat or a authoritarian regime deprives us of our dreams and hope. And as we, um, we, even though I'm, I'm a kid, even though I'm a student, I need to stay, I need hopes and dreams to stay alive, just like everybody else. So if you ask what my hope is, my answer is so basic. I just want some space to spread my wings, to fly and to enjoy freedom, liberty. I, I just want some space um, to take control of my body, to be free to act. But at this moment, different opinion is a threat for, for the, the state. And I don't want to live in this kind of atmosphere anymore. And what I want, what I dream is 
just as I said, I want to have a good life, but this country doesn't give that thing to me. And um, while adults, older people, um, that they, they, they have so much hope for us, and we feel so so much pressure, but, but then again, you don't give anything to us. This country doesn't give anything to us. We also uh, have no hope. So that is the problem um, about strengths and weaknesses. Um, so I would say that the challenge is um, we students doing activities, expressing our political opinions or joining political activi activities, the challenge is, is seniority and authoritarianism. Um, in Thailand, authoritarianism is at all levels in our society, in our family, at home, at schools. This is a great challenge. Will, um, are we going to be stigmatized um, or will we, will we be shunned by the society? Will, will other people see us as crazy people? This is a big challenge. And by joining political activities, we children, we, we, it takes a lot of courage because we need to ask for permissions from our parents and some are scolded for for that but but we know that this is the right thing to do but we have to face all those um downhearted words those negative words even though we know that what we're doing is the right thing so our goal the goal of high schoolers of students like me for for me in my opinion is that we want a, democrat, a democratic society. But if you ask me um, how far we have been going, of course, we're still far from our ultimate goal. Still far from that, still a long way. And we have to fight. It's gonna be a long fight. And we have to raise the bar of our movement, but um, some achievements that I can see is that we can prove to the society, to the adults in the Thai society, is that children, kids, youth, we, we have our own opinions. We are ourselves. We are crea creative. And maybe our perspective is more profound than that of adults. And I think this kind of brings down um, seniority, the seniority system, because we, we will not fight with age, with seniority, but we fight with ideas. Okay, I have two more minutes to talk. Okay. Um, so when we children, youth, when we are brave to challenge the power by tying white ribbons, um, or raising our three fingers. This is a new thing. This is a new way of fighting. Um, and yes, and the adults always tell us, always ask us, why can you not tolerate the society that we have been living in? My response to that is, so why do I have to tolerate this deplorable society. I want to go up, speak up for my own future. Okay, thank you so much, Kim, for your answer. It is very straight to the point because society expects a lot from us, but at the same time, society does not give anything, does not support youth. Also about authoritarianism and seniority. This is a very interesting topic because if you see the news, um, about the corporal punishment in school. This is an issue that needs to be addressed. 
so that um, authoritarianism disappears from our society to make everyone truly equal. Um, the next speaker is Ms. Park Jira or Liu from the Free Youth Movement. What is your motivation? What motivates you to come out and leads to a remarkable phenomenon? Um, what's the meaning behind the word free in your name, in the group? Um, what are your three demands? Uh, what are the strengths and weaknesses? How do you make a change. Um, the motivation is um, is the deplorable administration of General Prayu and Osha. Um, our people, you know, people feel dissatisfied. We are angry, but. The government doesn't care, ignores our dissatisfaction, so it's like a time bomb. And they keep harassing people, threatening people. This happened since uh, 2014, since the coup d'etat. Um, and I do not accept um, the current constitution because it doesn't come from people. Um, and by threatening people, by harassing people, the government creates this dissatisfaction. Um, and okay, the name, the Free Youth Movement, um, our group starts with two friends, James and Ford, who share the same political stance and also other friends. Um, I think that this country has no platform for youth to speak out, speak out. So we form this group of uh, free youth movement. This is an organic organization. We have no one um, who back us, no politicians, nothing at all. Um, so this is why the free youth movement happens. Um, free, what are we going to free ourselves from? Uh, for me, it's like a chain, it's like a structural problem. And is us, is the youth who have to unfetter ourselves from that chain. And, and also we want to unfetter Thai citizens from that chain too. We want to break free. I believe that many young people are awake. We have woken up to the problems of our country, we have the internet, we so we can access information, news, what's happening in Thailand, and of course we will not tolerate that that again. There is no way that the elite or the ruling class will try to suppress us or oppress us. We won't tolerate that. So this is how our group happens. This is how we form our group. Um, about strengths and weaknesses. I think that the young generation are, we can talk recent, that is what I want to say. We can talk recent, so we are brave enough to speak up for ourselves, uh, to question, to get into an argument. Adults may see us as aggressive, having no manners, but I think this quality is important in order to advancing our country, our nation. Um, another strength that I can see is that we are not afraid to be ourselves. We and we are also independent learners. We, we can access information, we can think for ourselves what is right, what is wrong. And we have courage, I think we have a certain level of courage. I think in the past, people didn't dare to come out because they were afraid of um, laws and consequences. But at this moment, we those fears have disappeared. And, and of course, when we um, organize protest or action, 
there is no single leader because everyone have courage to go up on the stage and speak. So even though um, the so-called leaders, you know, or speakers are arrested, our movement still continues because there is no single leader because everyone can be leader, everyone can take part and take charge. Um, so we are also, we are creative. I think our creativity is quite remarkable. We um, incorporate a lot of pop culture, like a Japanese animation, Hamtaro, if you heard about that. Um, and from what I see in provinces and region, we also incorporate our local culture, local arts into our movement. For example, the free artist, free art movement. Um, there are so at some protests, we also um, perform um, drama and plays symbolizing the failure of Thailand and also our group is diverse not only students not only youth or richer protesters but in our movement we see a lot of people um, people from LGBT communities um, university students and these components lead to our lead to this success um, for example, the free people movement, it is a, it, it consists of people from different backgrounds. And of course, um, diversity leads to some complication, right? But this is, it's natural because we are human beings. We have to be different and this is um, the basic principle of democracy, it rests on differences. Um, about weaknesses, okay, diversity leads to some internal conflicts, you know, we might have some clashes on our ideas. But on the other hand, that might not that, that might not be weakness, of course, because as I say, difference is democracy, difference is human, is human. Uh, thank you so much, Liu, for your answer about diversity, about um, there's no single leader, about cultural dimensions incorporated in um, the movement that make people feel that feel more engaged. And I would like to say that um, it's natural in the democrat democratic process that we we are different. It's so natural, and this is also important because differences lead to um, solution. We do not have to be on um, the same page all the time. We don't have to share the same idea, but it's important that we accept differences. Um, the next speaker is Mr. Tanaton from um, Chiang Mai University. Um, the gathering on July 18th has led to a phenomenon called, uh, it's like wildfire. Um, I, I would like you to tell us about what happened after that. And, um, what are your demands? What are the purposes of those activities in Chiang Mai and in other regions of Thailand? And do you think, are there any opportunities to connect to other network, to expand the network or to expand the movement horizontally? Please. Um, the wildfire phenomenon happens even before um, July 18th, happened before the gathering on July 18th. And so what happens after that is like a replication. Um, the activities are quite similar. Um, you will see flash mobs happening in other regions, in provinces around the country or you might have seen groups with different kind of activities like dramas, plays, art, 
uh, the, uh, the topic that we discussed are also along the same line, tyranny, authoritarianism, monarchy, um, about organizing the protest. From my experiences um, in Chiang Mai, we have three um, protests in Tapa, a region in Chiang Mai, one in university and another one at the um, Three King Monument. Um, our demands um, overall, in general, the demands are, the demands are very diverse. Each group with different demands, but basically we have seen um, dissolve the parliament, draft a new constitution, stop harassing people, reform monarchy and economic problems, health problems, um, the PM 2.5, you know, and welfare state. So those are common demands. So I would like to talk about flash mobs. In my opinion, um, the strong point here is, is a great tactic to avoid um, state oppression because like today we have an activity in Bangkok tomorrow, we go to Chiang Mai and the next day to Mahasarakam. It's a way to escape, to circumvent um, the threat. But um, the, the important thing is we have to, to make sure that we are on the same page, that we have the same main demands, that we, we agree on the same main demands. But luckily, um, the conflict on that hasn't happened yet. Um, another good point is that um, diverse topics, because you know, protests in Bangkok, protests in Chiang Mai, protests in the South, you will see a lot of local topics coming up. For example, in Chiang Mai, people will talk about the toxic dust, um, the air pollution problem, or agricultural produce, um, the, the price is so low, or we have um, ethnic minority joining us as well. So this is a very good strength um, to expand our network to fight for democracy in Thailand. Well, that's it. Um, but also at the same time, I have said we need to talk. It requires a lot of discussion, dialogue, so that we share the same interest, the same goal. Are we going for a republic or just constitutional monarchy? Monarchy, sorry. Um, about network expansion. In the regional level, uh, of course, we have seen that um, people in, in, in provinces, they take up a lot of ideas from Bangkok. Um, ideas, the topic on the stage, or the, the format of the activities. And then we have an activity of planting the, the plague on the royal field, and that inspires a lot of activities in in the regional levels. Um, after the the activity on on the eighteenth, um, I can see more connection between Bangkok and provinces, but the connection between between um, leading organizations uh, in Bangkok and in uh, regions. I haven't seen that yet. As Liu said earlier, of course, even though one organization is taken down, there are many others, but we have to, um, of course, we have to have the same strategy, shared strategy. Different organizations are good, but we have to make sure that we share the same goal. Um, another point that I missed, uh, our demands, actually, actually there are many details. Um, some popular demands are, 
our economic problems are related to economy. Meanwhile, the monarchy reform is is no less important. Um, as you have seen, the protest on September 19th or September 20th, we have many, many, a large number of participants. That was also about the monarchy reform. Another interesting demand is drafting a new constitution. Yesterday or some days earlier, um, we, we try to push that issue into the parliament and we try to put pressure outside the parliament. And I think um, parliamentary work and protests on the street can go together, it can go hand in hand, hands in hand. Um, but I think fighting um, under this constitution is not a fair, right? Because this constitution is not democratic. First of all, we need um, this government, this undemocratic government to step down first. Um, talking about flash mobs, um, nationwide flash mobs, um, it's like the mob in Bangkok is like the, the source of idea and um, activists in the region take this idea and replicate them. So, so I think activism in the regional level is like you just follow what happens in Bangkok instead of pushing for local issues. So I think this point needs to be fixed so that um, people in the regional level can stage their own protest, their own movement without waiting for um, people in Bangkok. Um, the, last point, the last point is very interesting and I agree. We need to help people in the regional level to be able to stand up for themselves. Um, this is a, a good point that we need to work on the street alongside work in the parliament to achieve our goal. And after reflecting of some reflection, we, we see that um, staging a protest in Bangkok and straight, staging protests in the regional level is a very good strategy. It's a way to give space for people in the regional level to, to take part in the, in the political process. Talking about activism in, in provinces, it is interesting because we have seen um, networks of youth, students, and people. We have also seen red shirt protesters who have joined and who have supported um, the student movement, especially during the protest on September 19th. We have seen a lot of red shirt protesters joining the students at the Royal Field in Bangkok. I would like um, um, Nick, um, Mr. Tanawit, uh, I would like you to talk about the red shirt, the red shirt protesters. What is their influence on the student movement at the moment? And about your group, the Democracy Front of Mahasarakan province. Um, the idea of your group is it different or the same as the ideology of the red shirts? And will you be able to transform the student protest into a broader public movement? Uh, regarding the red shirt protesters, um, I would like to say that the northeast region of Thailand is the, the red shirt territories, the red zone, um, especially uh, Udon Thani province. Um, you have to understand that the red shirt protesters, they, they feel that they are oppressed, suppressed, and forgotten. 
they are left behind in the economic system. They are suppressed, they are deprived. They feel that they live in an unjust society. So if you consider, or if you want to compare the movement of the red shirt with the, the movement of the student at the moment, I see differences and similarities. Um, students are asking, are demanding for justice, for equality. And the goal is, the goal is democracy, it's the same thing for students and for the red shirts. But for the red shirts, they, their focus is more about class, social class. They're, they see themselves as subjects fighting, challenging the ruling classes who like live in the sky. Um, you have to know that the red shirt protesters at first, they were afraid of joining us. They were, they hesitated because we are too straightforward. But as time passes, the, the red shirts, they accept us. They, they think that it's acceptable, it's understandable, and it's the truth, and it's the root cause of all the problems in Thailand. It is explainable, so they're not any more afraid of joining us. This ideology, of course, democracy is is synonymous to to differences, right? Um, I I have to say that the wretched protester they might not have the same understanding of democracy as what we have. And we, at the same time, cannot completely understand them. But our common stance is that democracy has democracy has to be about respecting people, respecting the voices of the people, and advancing for equal society. And this is something that both students and the richest protesters adhere to and this will lead to equal society. Democracy with people at heart. Um, but the strategies, the tactics are, of course, will be different. Um, we, me, for example, students, we are um, the descendants of the red shirts because we come after, right? And the red shirt as well, they are not uh, a solid substance. Of course, there are a lot of differences, but they have um, a leading organization, they have core organization. Um, but of course, you can see a lot of um, different tactics um, between regions. but they have uh, the central um, organization to, to hold every branches. Um, but okay, um, a bad move that the Richard protester did in the past is that um, the movement was during um, a high tide of politics and they thought that they could do anything that they want. So that was a, a big mistake. Um, but for us, for students, we started um, during, we started, uh, even though we know a, a lot of suppression threats, you know, um, for us, of course, talking about differences again, different student groups have different demands. For us, um, in Mahasarakam University, uh, I think we are the first um, group that talk about people's constitution. It, it was a constitution that was the most democratic ever written in Thailand. That That is our topic. I think this is, we are the first group that talks about that. Um, and for regional protests, we never talked, we never discussed, we just do what we want to do. So the picture that comes out is that you see a lot of activities, a lot of protests popping up everywhere. And also, even though we share the same goal, we take different routes. 
so about the influence of the red shirt on the student movement they are valuable lessons for us of course um the red shirts right now they are our shield they are our wall they are our armor they never say that they will lead they never said that they will set example for us but what they tell us always they say that they will support us they will protect us right now the red shirt protesters they they realize that it's time for the students to take the lead is not that time anymore because the red shirt leaders right now they are weakened and what we need now is the organic power the organic energy of the students because we have the same goal but we are more energetic the students are more energetic um one of the red shirt leaders uh miss tida she says that the students and the red shirts are demanding the same thing but the red shirts failed to to achieve that so the students continued from that and yeah but with many different other details entailing um but um the bravery of the red shirts the great deeds of the red shirt they were forgotten 10 years of fight they were forgotten but right now the students talk about it we remember their heroic deeds we try to um reclaim justice for them and as we study as we digging deep into the red shirt movement we are inspired by them and it gives us strength and and we, we realize that there are many issues there are many groups of people that have been left behind have always been left behind um, so talking about um transforming the student protest into a public movement we have to destroy the age barrier or the generation gap we have to unite i think personally for, for me i think the students need to join forces with people in a concrete way that will give us strength we will never win if we do not involve people adults other groups it is a beautiful picture to see that people uh, students stand up for themselves is really good it's really ins inspiring but we lack experience we have to accept that so joining forces with the people with the the red shirts is important and we have to respect them the, the red shirts the um the fighter who have been there before us is important to destroy the generation gap overcome that thank you so much nick a great assessment of the red shirt movement and student movement very interesting very strong point because this is it's like we we are learning from each other and that will lead to a stronger movement to achieve our goal this is a this is something this is a question that you need to that we need to sleep on that to think a lot about that uh next uh miss to tip siri khan or Ua, please talk about um after you have come out, after seeing a lot of students doing activities in schools, and from what we have heard from the previous speakers, what? Okay, please talk about the state's use of power to harass students, youths, movement leaders, people or participants. 
please tell us about uh, please please tell us about that um, about harassing students use and people um, I would like to say I would like to begin by harassment does not happen um, at the same time as the, um, the the when the free youth movement started but it has been happening since um 2014 since the coup d'etat in 2000 2014 sorry it has been happening since that because since uh 2014 um people have been doing a lot of activities as well and we have been harassed since that um I can count 192 incidents of state harassment towards um, people. And there are a lot more that are not registered, that are not recorded. Um, apart from formal warrant, formal punishment, um, people are visited by by the state. They send someone to visit us at home to threaten our parents, our families. It's like they're, they're using soft power against us because when, when the, the officers come to visit our parents and our parents are afraid for themselves and they are afraid for us and they will try to um dissuade us from going out it's like they're using soft power against us and each time we stage a protest or action we will see a lot of measures from the state that use against us for example they use a hidden camera in the they use hidden camera and they walk around our protest with a hidden camera or a police officer who do not wear a uniform they, they, they can come in so many forms you know delivery men um, and passers by with hidden camera um, and as time passes that tactics are more um, are more refined um at the time when the harassment um is not as obvious as now they will ask for our id cards they will ask for our personal information um about since july 18th um, the day that we started the protest, the, the student movement, um, I have heard that a lot of people, both on the stage or participants, they are persecuted by the state. Um, I have seen a list uh, that has been released. Um, we see a lot of people with uh, arrest warrants and summons and people who are charged, who are accused of violating traffic laws, for example. And, or, yeah, for violating many other acts and many other laws. Uh, and the arrest, continues i have seen so far 15 people have been arrested um the first person is mr anon and mr mike i was also arrested as well and now on that list um of the 15 people there is one person who has not been arrested yet and some of us, we are just students. And, and the, the, the last person who hasn't been arrested yet, she went up on the stage 
and declare uh, with three demands. One of those demands is to ha stop harassing people. And you can see they do not listen to us at all. And the arrest warrant, warrant issued for her is very serious. They accused her of instigating violence, of sedition. Um, regarding the harassment, the threats that happens to, to me personally, um, an arrest warrant has been issued for me under the Article 116 of the Criminal Code of Thailand. First, they will detect my phone signal and they will follow me so that they know my location. Once they are able to detect my phone signal, they will. They, they will inform the NGOs, um, people who protect me. They will inform them that they know where I am. And, but because I talk a lot to media, to people outside, I give all my personal information, right? For example, my, my phone number. So the state, they have my number and they con contact me through um, social media platform. And they tell me that they know my exact location, the exact coordination. coordination. The first day that I received the threat is August 15th. It's one day before a protest on the August 16th. But after that, nothing happened, luckily. But after after August 16th, one week after that, um, they send people at my dormitory and they show my picture to the dormitory's guardian. And, and they told the guardian that they asked if the guardian they asked the guardian if she knew me um the guardian the guardian lied to those people that i did not live there anymore the state the state told the guardian that you know the family of this girl they were communist and they try to um, destroy the monarchy. They try to change the regime. Do you know that, the Guardian? But luckily, the Guardian does not like um, the administration of Prayut Chan Osha. They, she doesn't like this government. So she told me what, what happened. She helped me. Um, then after that, I was stopped by police officer in disguise some were loitering with intent for me at the university gate on the streets and yeah they released news that they would arrest me on this day that day but i'm still free um, but on the day that they they said that they would arrest me i was not arrested but other people were arrested Mr. Ford and Mr. James from the Free Youth Movement, they were arrested. And then so after that, I changed my address because it's very unsafe. Every time I came back to my dormitory, I have to be so careful. I have to check if anybody was following me. I have always been living alone. But after this happened, I have to ask a friend to to stay with me to live with me to watch my back after some time after the the arrest warrant after some time two or three days i started to wonder oh when will they come to arrest me so i i shared my location i share my public location for example, when I went to a public place, I I share my location so that they know where I am. 
to kind of challenge them so that they come and arrest me. Um, but I think they knew that I was in a public place, so they didn't come to arrest me. So I told my friend to to leave so that I can I could be alone. And on that day, it was Monday. Uh, it was Tuesday, sorry. I was about to go to school. I called a taxi. When I was at the main street, I saw police officers with no uniform um, and they told my taxi to pull over and then they show their identity that there were police officers and they show me the arrest warrant and they that, and that they would arrest me the process was quite strange they they use a pickup car i didn't know whose car was that and they, they told me to get in the car, but I said no, because the process was strange. So I told them that, okay, I would go to the police station um, in, in, the, in this taxi. And that the police officers came with me in the same taxi. On the way, I, I read a book to the police officers on that day, I was I was going to to my internship. Um, I showed the book. The book is Common Sense by Thomas Paine. I showed this book to them, and I read um, some part about the fight, about our fight at the moment. I read this to them all the way to the station, to the police station. And yeah, then, yes, I was arrested and I was bailed out. So everything was so fast. And after I was bailed out, nothing happened and I continued fighting, protesting. Thank you so much for sharing us examples of how the state threatens people and your personal experience and this is exactly um the harassment the threats and the threats it has always been there it's not recent it's not a recent phenomenon it has always been there a long long time ago and you know, dissidents uh, have to. We have to leave the country. Our lives, our safety, our families are under are in danger. Okay, for the first round, we will end this round with Mr. Anon. After we have torn down the ceiling there is no taboo topic at all now we can talk about the monarchy publicly and about your 10 demands and one dream about the monarchy reform um and two days ago the the parliament postponed the constitution's amendment vote for one month um, considering that, um, you know, the Thai king, he lives in the, in Germany at the moment, he seems to love cycling more than his people. Um, considering the ignorant attitude of the government towards your demands, you know, a lot of negative among these negative factors the question is what and how should we do to push for the real reform of the monarchy and what should we do to make parliamentary work go hand in hand with um the work on the street what, what should we do what and how I think 
we have to accept the reality that we have come to the point that people are so dissatisfied with the monarchy. The dissatisfaction is intense and wide. After all this time, I think today, the dissatisfaction is the most obvious. It shows that we do not trust or love the monarchy anymore. I think it has been clear from our side and from the royalist side, we know the purpose of, of the fight that we want to put the monarchy under the constitution. And the demands from the free youth movement, the, the three demands, stop threatening people. We, to be more in detail, we want the monarchy to stop harassing people. Not just the state is for the monarchy or for about the dissolve the parliament or draft a new constitution. Everything is so clear that everything points to the monarchy. And so now we can talk publicly about the monarchy. We have to accept that every protest stage at this moment, we can talk directly about the monarchy. We can talk directly about in which direction we want our society to go to go or to change. If the monarchy do, does not adapt, does not listen to our demands, of course, the next thing is that we will go for a republic. You can see the trend on social media is it's very strong. You, you can't turn a blind eye on this. You can't, you cannot just look away. The question is, why, why don't you do something about the power of the monarchy that now is, is limitless, you know, it needs to be taken under control. Because at first, when we raised, when we raised this issue about monarchy, of course, we, we are prepared for criticism, for attack from the right wing. But we are ready for that. You know, as you listen to the previous speakers, they, they say that they hope for a better life. They said they hope for a better society. And they are brave to talk about the monarchy, about the constitution. For me, I, I used to be afraid, I have to say that, but the kids this day, the, the youth this day, they, they're not afraid they talk about this like it's a normal thing. And you know, the world keeps changing. And if the states still trying to brainwash um, students with the same ideology, you know, there's no use for that at all. Because people these days, they're, they are not afraid, as you know. They are not afraid to speak up. They, this makes them different from the older generation. And because they, they are young, and I think their, their link, their connection with the monarchy is not as strong as uh, the connection between the monarchy and the older people. And they, they were born into the regime of dictatorship, military dictatorship. Okay, so right now you can see there are two main stages uh, of the protest. You, you will see the, um, the, the free move, the, the free youth movement and the, the stage of the Tamasad University. Um, some may say that the, the demand of the free youth movement is softer than that of the Tamasad movement. But what I have been experiencing from this group, the essence is the same thing. And I think um, the free youth movement now is more forward is more straightforward than the Tamasad um, movement. As you can see the latest protest, every speaker on the stage of the free youth movement, they spoke about the reform of the monarchy and the stage was right in front of the parliament. And um, th there was another protest on August 10th. You say that the protest on that they raised the bar of our public discussion tear, tore down the ceiling. 
it might sound and look uh, fierce and strong, but there was nothing new on that day on the August 10th, but the stage on September 19th, that is the thing that is a very important milestone uh, for, for social change. And you know, speaking in front of the parliament and the military offices is, is phenomenal, is remarkable. But sadly, the media did not um, publicize the content. And each speaker, they have that they were prepared full of content, full of argument, effective argument, interesting argument. So I think the change is here to stay. The fight for, for social movement is here to stay and we will not back down. And if the monarchy does not adapt, the protester will not go home empty handed. We pledge for that. So we are, we are ready to fight to the end. And, and this movement today, the anger is so intense because um, people who have lost their loved one, who have been, who, ha who experienced tragedy during um, October 14, 1973 or October 6, 1976, or during the Red Shirt era, all of those angers, all of the dissatisfaction, it makes the current movement so strong and intense. And if, if we are still being neglected, if we are still not heard, a call for republic is, is expected. Because right now people are not, people do not appreciate the monarchy like in the past. In the past, uh, we only have, you know, few television, television channels. We do not have much, many choices of media that we want to listen to. But right now, we have a lot of channel to access to information. You might see uh, the Thailand's national flag flying in Thailand, right? But at the same time, you know that our king resides in Germany. Um, you can see that um, recently the right wing, they, they started their movement as well. But the number of celebrities, idols and famous people who used to join the right wing protests um, Right now, the number is much, much lower. So I think this is something that we, every part of the society need to come together and talk about it. The state, what are you going to do about the students? Are you going to use violence against them? Or are you going to listen to them and try to adapt or meet halfway? But, but the most important thing is the monarchy. You have to you have to listen to us. Are you willing to adapt? Are you willing to spend less money? Are you willing to um, curb your power? Are you willing to to live in harmony with democracy and the constitution and the parliament as well? Are you willing to? Um, take our demands seriously. But from what I've heard, everything is silent. We are still not heard. Our voice is still silent. And about the concubine, you know, um, firing concubine and reinstalling her, it's like a, a family drama, you know, and no one like that, no one is happy about that. They still care for their own, their personal issues. They don't care about our demands. They don't care about the people. And what happened, what is happening in the parliament now also shows that parliamentarians, um, politicians, 
do not have much power to make a change. So, so of course, we're now talking about the 10 demands, but the demand that goes beyond those is something that has to be expected, you know, if if the establishment does not adapt. And the, the, the younger people who go up on the stage, they talk directly, they, they say the king's name, they do not use nickname. And that is, that is bravery, that is courage. And it's something that has to be discussed because we can move to other countries, right? We have to stay in Thailand. So I just want to tell the monarchy that you cannot win against people. Without people's faith, the monarchy is not able to, to continue. You have to realize that people over the a lower below the age of 30 they don't appreciate the monarchy at all and we would question you know even on his birthday the king is not in the country is not in thailand nothing like this ever happened even in the in the king rama knife the the current king he abuses his power so much and he doesn't care at all. So I think it's time to open space to, to the people, to the students. Do not threaten us with laws and consequences because we're not afraid. The younger generation is not afraid. So it's time to talk directly, frankly, straightforward, openly. So if the 10 demands are not accepted, the next move will be to go for a republic. So thank you so much, Mr. Anon. It's very clear. If the monarchy does not listen to us, the next thing is the republic. Um, so I can see that the students, they try so hard to communicate, to, to send their message, but the response is always silence. And yes, maybe it's time that the demand for republic need to, needs to be raised. And kudos to the students for their bravery, for their courage to be straightforward. And for me, as someone who is over 40 years old, I agree with Mr. Anon because we are still trapped um, in our head, there is a cage, there is a trap that prevent us from speaking out like um, the younger students do. We, we have to respect them. And this is a great point about our king who lives in Germany, but not in his own country. Um, and, you know, living in a democratic society, um, in Germany, you can criticize um, politicians um, or the king. In Germany, people are free to do that, but in Thailand, not so much. Okay, now we will take a break for two or three minutes for Nicola to sum up um, the contents or what we have talked about in English. Okay, thank you so very much for uh, all of you. Yeah, I was really impressed with all your positions and in particularly about your bravery. So we heard varying positions and demands for, from the call for free and fair elections, as well as the demands for the amendment of the constitution, as well as for a sustainable reform of the monarchy or even calls for 
uh, Republic of Thailand. So there were very remarkable uh, remarkable points raised. And Kun Thanaporn, she said, uh, political movement comes as a surprise for many people because the perception in Thailand is politics is not for kids. She said, we have never been encouraged to speak out. Social media played an important role. And she said, I want to spread my wings and enjoy freedom. I want to have space to take control of my body, free to act. And the challenge is that authoritarianism is at all levels. What we do is a new way of fighting. And Pak Jura from the Free Youth Movement, she said, we are angry, but the government keeps harassing people since the coup 2014. She said, I do not accept the current constitution since it does not come from the people. Via internet, we can access now what is happening in Thailand and elsewhere. We are brave enough, she said, to act for ourselves. This is important for our country. And we have the strength to express ourselves. In the past, people were afraid to come out. But she said, this fear has disappeared. And uh, this is also performed in a free art movement. So the group for youth is diverse, she said, and difference is democracy. She points out difference is human, difference is democracy, difference is important. Uh, Kun Tanaton from Chiang Mai, uh, he said, um, he de he's describing flash mobs coming out, happening in other regions of the country as well, not only in Bangkok. So after the 18th July, there were more connections between Bangkok and the provinces, he said. And he was also talking about the varying demands. The most popular demands are support for people because of the ongoing economic problems. But the monarchy reform is no less important. Drafting a new constitution is very important as well, because fighting under this constitution is not fair, since this constitution in itself is not fair. So, and the uh, protest on the streets, as well as working in parliament is an important strategy. And he also said, we have seen red shirts coming out, supporting the students' movement, in particular during the rally on 19th September. So on that point, Kun Tanawait was taking over. He said, regarding the red shirts, the Northeast, as we all know, is a stronghold of the reds. The red shirts felt that they were forgotten, that, that they have lived in an unjust society. And he said there are, were differences as well as similarities between both the red shirts and the young generations movement, both demand justice and equality, as well as true democracy. Although perhaps the red shirts focus more on social class movement, he describes it like that. But he said the common stance is that democracy is about respecting people and that the voices of the people should be heard and that there should be an equal society. So personally, from my own experiences, um, because I have lived in Thailand for some years, um, is um, that the red shirts laid the, some sort of ideological groundwork in some way. So for the current protests of the young generation. And uh, Tanawit also said, he was quoting Tida Tawan said, um, he, she was uh, once one of UDD leaders. She said that the Reds and the young generation actually were demanding the same thing. Danawit also said, we remember the bravery of the Red Shirts. It was only 10 years since the Thai army cracked down on the Red Shirt demonstrations in Bangkok. He said, the Red Shirts give us power. They have been there before us. Then um, I would like uh, to uh, talk about what Kun Jutatip said. Since the coup 2014, we did a lot and we were harassed since then. Many incidents have been recorded, including monitoring, intimidation, arrest, prosecution by the state. Uh, she also see, has seen lists with arrest warrants. She shared her own experiences. She was shown an arrest warrant to her by plainclothes police officers. After that, she was bailed out. And she said uh, many, many times there were demands on the stages made. One of the demands is stop harassing the people, but the state does not listen at all. Kunanon uh, said uh, something about the 10 demands for monarchy reform. Two days ago, parliament postponed the demands for amendment of the constitution. And Kunanon said, we have come to the point that people were very dissatisfied with the monarchy. He said, we want to put the monarchy under the constitution. Now we can talk publicly about the monarchy and that we want change. The next thing is, if the state is not listening, we will go for a demand of a Republic of Thailand. 
Of course, he said, we are prepared for attacks by the right wing side and uh, said that he used to be afraid, but the world keeps changing. The young generation is not afraid to speak out. That makes them different from the older generation. And there were two main stages of the protest, the extents of the demands of free youth movement and the Tamaset movement. Um, they are actually the same. And uh, Kunanon said, we will not back down. We pledge we are ready to fight until the end. He also is drawing comparison to um, events in the past. He said, when we look at pro-democracy movements, which were crushed in October 1973 and October 1976, as well as in 2010, all the state-sponsored violence and the anger about that will keep us fighting on. So he said, putting the question into the open, are you going, the state, are you going to use violence or are you going to listen to us? So monarchy, are you willing to curb the power and live in harmony with the constitution? He said, so far there has been silence from parliament. And uh, he said the kids on the stage were very, very brave. They speak out the king's name directly. They do not use nicknames. He said, this is bravery. So thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ค่ะ. Okay. For the next round, um, there are two questions prepared for our guest speakers. Um, for the first question, Liu, Nick, and Hong Fei, could you please tell us um, after this what activities are you preparing? How would you raise the bar of your fight or your what are your goals? Uh, start with Liu and then Nick and then Hong Fei. As you have seen from news um, about Pua Thai party, uh, Sudarat, she resigned um, as the head of the strategy head of strategic movement. Of course, the postponement of the constitution amendment vote creates a great level of dissatisfaction among the people. Um, for me, I think what the government is doing is to, to make us angry so that we are tempted to use violence. And then once we use violence, they will have, um, I don't know, maybe it's justified for them to use violence against us. So I think they're, they're trying to make us angry. So I would like to tell all of you that do not fall for this trap. Do not go with their flow. Do not be angry. Do not use violence. I would like to, to tell you about this. Oh, so moving back to the activities that we have prepared for the future. Um, now we, we are trying to make our activities more creative. For example, the free art movement or the group in Chiang Mai province, we have, we have a, a drama group who will perform um, a lot of art acts. And in other regions, we will try to involve local cultures, local arts, local wisdom into our action. Our folk songs will be incorporated and local issues, local problems will be addressed, will be talked about on the stage. Just like um, the speaker from Mahasarakam University, we will not leave anyone behind. We will talk about the mining issue, about the interference of investors, of capitalists, or about fishing problems in the South. This issue is talked this issue gains more interest in uh, on the stages so we want to make our activities more creative more fun more interesting cool. 
้างไหมคะน้องน้องน้องหลุยเรียบร้อยแล้วค่ะ that that's that's it that's the end that's my answer Uh, Nick, um, please. Um, what activities have you been preparing? I cannot hear you. Okay. Um, the activities of Mahasarakam University. Um, on October fourth, we will have a gathering. Um, this gathering will be the first gathering that. Every group in the northeast helped brainstorm. Um, it, it will be the first joint movement of the regional level. So this is our first step of the proactive strategy. I would like to reach out to people in all provinces of the northeast. Um, In the northeast region, people here are so diverse, are so different. We come from different backgrounds and statuses, and our political background are also different. Um, there are some provinces that people are especially more active, while other provinces are less. So in the northeast, we we try to brainstorm. And the result is going to be this protest on October 4th. and we try to shape our strategy together to, to reach out to more people. And with Mahasaraka province as their starting point, and then we will gather uh, the problems, the issues, and then when we will submit these issues. To, um, to to the policymakers, to those who are in the power to change this, to fix this, and we try to connect with other groups. We try, we will try to connect with the local people. So on October 4th, this will be the beginning of of uniting people and students of the northeast. The protest will be organized at Mahasarakam University in Mahasarakam Province. We will give space for every group. There will be a lot of topics that we will talk about: monarchy, land, constitution, LGBT. They will be addressed on the stage. I expect to see. People from many sectors, many provinces. Um, right now, the red shirt from 13 provinces have accepted our invitation to join. The main, the main purpose, the main purpose of the stage is, we want this to be a real political stage, not just for an event. So. That that's about it for the northeast. Can you hear me? Um, Hong Tae. Okay, this is Hong Tae. Uh, okay, for me. Um, regarding strategies that I want to incorporate in the next movement i would like to use non-violence because we need to gather to attract more supporters we need them for our next step uh, apart from non-violence the next protest will have to be more than just for fun or for just event or for for entertainment after this our gathering each gathering we have to be informational educative and and we have to fight to reclaim our space for democracy um in, in chiang mai there is a space called tap hair 
is a, a space for, for protest, for public action. I would like to create the same space like Tape in other parts of, of the province and other provinces as well. And I would like um, this space to, to be open to everyone about the strategy. I. I would like to talk more about what we are going to create, what we are going to build or offer, not just only attacking the monarchy or attacking the government. I would like to offer more, or maybe offer the government an opportunity to negotiate Otherwise, we will raise the bar of our demands. For example, if um, the demand for the monarchy reform is rejected, then it is acceptable. It is understandable, right, that we would like to raise our bar. We would like to go for a higher demand than that. Um, talking about expanding our network, we might have to change um, the format of our gathering, incorporating more activities, using more creativity, not just uh, speech, music, or play. We might need to incorporate music or other activities. Thank you so much. So you can see that the activities that they are preparing will be more intense, will be stronger in terms of um, the, 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 the content and the format. So we have to support them so that we can go together for a better Thailand, for a better version of Thailand that is more equal, more just, more democratic. It is interesting that they incorporate local issues, differences of each region, and that will create a unity and bring out the uniqueness of each region at the same time. The next question is for Ua, Kim, and Anon. Um, the audience today comes from many different organizations and including students. Uh, what would you like um, people in Europe, what would you like them to, to do to give you support? Um, three minutes for each speaker. We'll begin with Ua and Kim and Anon. For me, um, the thing that I wish uh, the European community to help us about our protest is that uh, right now we have been receiving help and, and support. Thank you so much. Um, of course, thank you so much for listening to us, for trying to understand what is happening in Thailand. And, and ambassadors from many countries, they came to observe our activities. But in the future, we, we don't know what happened. We, we don't know what will happen in the future. Right. right now, we are being threatened. We're being harassed by the state. And what used to happen before, for example, forced disappearance, or serious accusation. I would like uh, the European community to keep an eye on us, keep watching us, especially about um, cases of disappearances and death. I've heard a rumor that the less majestic law or Article 112 of criminal, crime, criminal code will be used against um, dissidents. And for, for activities in Bangkok, thank you so much um, to 
many organizations that come to observe us, but we would like you to maybe go to other provinces as well. Um, you, you may as well connect or contact to the attorney center. Right now we have the attorney center who, who help us, who will take care of the legal issue for us, but it would be great if we have this kind of support from other countries as well. If you could go to other provinces, because I think in Bangkok, we have a lot of support right now. So for, for other provinces. And if the unexpected happens, I would like you to help us by issuing emergency visas for us, for people who would like to leave Thailand to become political refugees. For me, I I would like I, I wish um, organizations in Europe it's just like just like what Ua had said. I would like you to keep watching us and learning with us, studying the movement in Thailand in order to find um, opportunities that so that you can support us. And please be a loud speaker for us. Um, please let the world know about us. I, I would like you to, to speak for us, to share our stories to the world. Because right now I think Thai citizens do not see themselves just as Thai citizens, but we also want to be global citizens. We also see ourselves as global citizens. And I would like to, to know that our voices matter. Thank you so much. I would like to, I would like um, people in Europe to to use um, sanction measures against against our government because I think it works. I would like you to consider this sanction boycott banning, and and when you publish or release your statement of support of your stance, that means a lot to us, especially statement from Germany because this is where our king resides, our king and his women reside from Germany, from France. Um, France is where the king's daughter lives in or often visits. I would like you to release statements to put pressure on our monarchy so that they maybe they hear you and they might think of adapting, of changing because Otherwise, because otherwise, once the physical violence happens, it will, I'm afraid that it will go beyond control because all the weapons are, are on their side. They have all the weapons, guns, tanks, but we have nothing. So if that happened, if physical violence happens, I would like you, the European people and all parts of the world, please punish our government, sanction them, pressure them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All of the six guest speakers, we have learned and heard a lot of interesting topics and issues. And I think audience, our listeners from all around the world, they might have um, they might have gained some interesting topics, something that are beneficial to them so that they can build up on and, and develop. Our voices are being sent to all organizations in Europe. I do not think that this is, this is impossible. I think this is understandable and it's not too hard to do, right? help us uh, give give us support for protesters in provinces in provinces uh, help pressure put pressure on our government please share our stories to the world make our voices matter 
I don't think this is impossible. I think these demands, this is, is doable. Okay, so we have around 20 minutes left. To our listeners from Facebook or in Zoom, if you have any question, you can send it to us. Use the Google link that you see. Uh, okay, the question. Uh, we have been receiving some questions. Okay, so the first question is to is for Tanaporn. How do the school students manage or organize? And do you connect with other schools in other provinces, provinces in other regions? And are school students politicized by their parents if they were active in the red shirts or yellow shirts? Thank you. Uh, I, 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 I don't belong to any group. I'm just an individual. I'm just a student. But of course, there are large groups like the, the bad student group, if you heard about it. And there are groups of many other schools. But once a student or once students speak up about, politic, about politics, of course, they risk being harassed by, by the schools, by the teachers. Their points will be deducted. They will be admonished, scolded, or they may face corporal punishment. Uh, to the question, how do we manage? Um, I have to say, I just, I, I do this for, for my life. I do this for my dream and hope. So I think no matter what, we, we just have to manage. We just have to keep organizing, keep doing activities. To the question whether the students are red shirt or yellow shirt, I have to say that um, during the red shirt and yellow shirt era, I, I, I was still so young. We were so young. We were in the primary schools. We, we didn't, our perception of politics was so limited. I was fourth grader. I was, I was a fourth grader at that time. I knew nothing about politics at that time. I only knew that, okay, people were divided into two sides. There was a curfew, you could not go outside. But as I grew up, I, now I, my, my critical skills has improved. My analytical skill has improved. So right now I, 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 I know more, but basically students have no side. We, are, we do not belong to any um, side or color. Next question is for Mr. Anon. How long will this movement go? For how long? What do you think about the safety of the people and of the leaders, of the protest leaders? I, I have to say, I, we have to count back right now, like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. I, well, I don't know, but I think the last straw, the last straw of the Thai society is, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't see that last straw. I don't see that, but the thing that will sparks the change is, I think it can be some simple thing that, that we do not expect, I don't know, but don't keep searching for the last straw. I think it doesn't exist. I think it could be something that, that we don't know yet. But what I can say for certain is that the change has taken place. The seeds are sown and 
the flowers are just waiting to bloom. And a lot of people join us. They want to advance the change. Um, yeah, so I think it will go a long way. Regarding safety, okay, this might be a dire thing, sad thing to ask, uh, to, to say, but they can kill us if they want. We never know when. Um, participants in the protest, they face the same risk as those who are on the stage because we sleep on the same ground on the royal field or in Thai we call Sanam Luang. We face the same risk, the same charge. The leaders face so many charges, but our participants are also threatened. They are asked to sign a contract or an MOU not to go out to join the protest. Just like Ua that you heard her say, she was threatened as well. So for the safety, I think everybody is facing the same risk. It depends on how, how well we protect ourselves, how well we protect our friends. And if that thing happens to us, what are we going to respond to it? How are we going to respond to it? To Mr. Anon as well, um, do you think the current movement is um, will justify the next coup data. Uh, I think coup data is unlikely at this moment because um, if it happens, the next the next move is of course a republic. Of course, so I, I don't think they dare stage a coup at the moment. Unlikely. And, and also the military, they take control of all the power right now. Then there is no need for them to do, to stage a coup. If, if they want to threaten us, if they want to crack down or crush us, they can do it so easily. So no need for that. But, but um, an advantage that we have over the military, over the state is that you cannot kill our spirit you cannot kill our movement even though i were taken speakers were taken the participants were willing would be willing to to continue the fight and the harassment that has been perpetrated to all people that will even make us angrier and people will be more ready to to, to fight Are you afraid of the crackdown with the violence, the bloodbath, um, just like in 2006 and 2019? Um, are you afraid of that, the, the violence from the state? You can start with Mr. Anon. I think I think we can prevent that from happening. Maybe with um, by proposing our demands or pushing the parliament to amend laws. But if it happens, we have to be prepared as well. I can see on September 19th, um, the participants from, from the spirit of the students of the younger generation, I can see the Hong Kong model on the horizon. I can see that. And, and the students protest, they, there's a high level of nonviolence. They are so peaceful. And you know that they went in front of the parliament, they raised the three fingers. They may use swear words, curse words, but they, they use no violence. So I think a high, a high level of peace. In my opinion, I, I, I'm afraid. I have to say, honestly, I'm, I'm so afraid because we are so connected to the people and I would, I do not want to be 
I don't want to have to carry that guilt for the rest of my life if violence happens. As one of the leaders, one of the worst accusations that people could give me is that they, they, they might say that I bring people to their death. I ask people to come out for them just to be killed. That is the worst thing I would like to hear. And for me, I see that the state, the right wing, they try to use the third party to to destroy our movement, to to create a condition for them to use violence against us. For me, I think the right wing group, which is called Thai Pak D group of the right wing, the opposite side, these groups are organized, are all organized by the state to instigate us, to make us angry, to their purpose is is to try to create a condition that justifies the use of violence. Because their, because the, the content on the stage, their demands, their proposal are are not relevant to 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 the society, to to the current, um, to the world. So that the sole purpose is to try to create violence. Um, you you might have seen um the former leaders of um the right wing now they they have they start to make their move so we ha you have to keep an eye on that we have to keep an eye on that and and try to understand to dig deeper into their real intention but we also have to to protect ourselves because we have learned a lot of um um lesson from october 1973 or october 1976 or you know so i think the right wing they have not a many strategies or tactics they have not many gimmicks so i think they are easy to read so we should read them well and do not fall for their trap at this moment you know considering our situation we are we cannot win over them using force you know they have weapons they have all the legal mechanisms parliament the only thing we have is our energy so if you ask me if violence happens or a coup d'etat happens or the crackdown happens, we have only two choices. First, do we want to sacrifice our movement or do we want to sacrifice our lives? That these are two choices that we have. We might want to sacrifice the movement for now, but we can rebound. But if we sacrifice our life, we might be remembered as heroes or heroines. But if our people um, do not have leaders, what will be the future of our movement? So this is something that we have to think about. We have five minutes left. Um, can I have the last question, please? The last question is, Why? Why do you think the European community should be interested in the human rights in Thailand, human rights issue in Thailand? Because at the same time, European European countries are also having difficulties with uh, refugees. So why should the European community pay attention to the human rights issue in Thailand? Uh, Hong Te and Liu, could you please answer this question? Two minutes for each of you. First of all, I think the reason that 
the European countries should pay attention to the human rights issue in Thailand is, uh, I would like to ask for your cooperation. I would like to ask for your mercy. The development of democracy. We have to, to see it this way. It's impossible to develop democracy in one country, but democracy is a global process. We have to grow together. So if you if you cherish the democratic values, you should pay attention to to other places that, that are having problems uh, with their democratic process. So I would like to ask for the cooperation to, to come to Thailand to observe what's happening in Thailand. If they see humans, uh, if we see that we are all equals, if we see that no one should be threatened, should be harassed by the, the state, if you think human rights should be respected, I think you should come and help us. Oh, I would like to talk about a convention that Thailand has signed. There are there are nine conventions. Okay, of the nine conventions, Thailand has signed only seven. Um, the, the two that we do not sign is the convention on the disappearance and the convention on the, the migration. I would like to, to say, I agree with Hong Tae. Uh, you do not have to give us that much support. You, you don't have to, to come here to fly here. Just observe us, just help us spread our words. Because in Thailand, the media in Thailand is also controlled by the state. The media is also afraid of the state. So as our media is silenced, we need media from other countries to speak for us. And please, please push Thailand to sign uh, the remaining two conventions. I don't know in whichever way that you think it will work. Um, any other question? We have two minutes left. Okay, another question for Ua. Uh, for Ua, for Ms. Jutatip, you said your friends, um, your, your friends were arrested by the police. Are they living in the same, are they living in their apartment now or, or are they arrested? I don't understand the question. ออกจากกับอ่าห้องพักอะไรประมาณนี้เนี่ยนะคะค่ะตอนเหตุการณ์นั้นแม้ว่าเพื่อนตอนนี้ยังอยู่ที่อพาร์ตเมนต์หรือ
for another talk. So that's about it. This is the end of our webinar. Thank you so much to our guest speakers and listeners and participants. And please help us, give us support. Please support the movement of the young generation in Thailand, no matter where you live in this world. Thank you so much for your support and interest. And I wish we can have a better Thailand. Thank you.